You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. I want to bring in uh, Jane Elliott right now. Uh, Jane Elliott, of course, we've had her on before. She's an amazing educator. She speaks truth to power. Uh, she does not hold back. I think she's probably more unfiltered than I am. Uh, Jane, uh, when you look at what I, I, I... Jane, I fundamentally believe what's driving all of this is white fear. Republicans are scared to death of black people. They're scared to death of Latinos. Hell, they're scared, they scared of conscious white folks. And what they're Wait. trying to... Go ahead. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're using all the wrong terms in the first place. See, there I was waiting no, on you to go there. Go ahead. <laughs> there is no such thing as white people and black people. There are only people who are different shades of brown. But as long as you use the words white and black, white, the definition of white is pure and un un unvarnished. Black is the color of savagery and ignorance. Now, as long as you use those two terms, we're going to be at one another's throats. If you'd ever get around to the point that you could look at me and see that I'm not white. My shirt's white, my hair is white, my skin is not. And I can look at CJ there and I can see that his hair is black and his skin is not. If we could get over the idea of several different races, maybe, maybe melanemic people, which is what we white folks ought to be called, could get used to realizing that we're all, yeah, this is, so, the whole thing is so ridiculous. You know, words are the most powerful weapon devised by humankind. I'm sitting here listening to words being used in ways that will separate us indefinitely. As long as you call yourselves white and black, and as long as you call yourselves members of different races, that, by God, is how long this problem is going to last. So you call yourself, yes, you said, you said melanemic? What, what did you say? Melanemic. Me melanemic, okay. So <laughs> if, you're anemic, look, if you're anemic, you don't have enough blood. But iron in your blood to keep your healthy. So you're called anemic. So how do... Have, so, Jay, have, so yes. in our public policy, how do we confront the melanemic Republicans who want to prevent the melanated other folk uh, from being able to cast votes, who are able to put in all of these ridiculous measures that they claim is voter integrity, when in fact it is all designed uh, to keep power in their melanemic hands? Number one, you have to stop calling them Republicans because Donald Trump knocked the L out of the word Republican. So what you end up with is a description of what he is most interested in, the area in which he is most interested. You've got to stop talking about Donald Trump. As long as you talk about him, he maintains his importance. Oh no, no, no! The I didn't mention Donald Trump. That's why I said. That's why I said the. That's why I said the party. Because see, the mistake that Hillary Clinton made in 2016, she tried to separate Trump from the Republican Party. Then Joe Biden is, in, and I'm like, no, 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 no. These folks, you could take Tr Trump out of this. They still are pursuing policies that are going to impact me in a negative way. They aren't the ones you have to worry about. You have to worry about the evangelicals who are supporting Trump. Right. Have you read the book Unholy? Read the book Unholy, and then you'll know where the problem is, and you'll know what you have to do about it. I am more frightened by what the evangelicals are doing to this country than by what one man and the Republican Party can do to it. The evangelicals have now invaded every facet of our lives in a really disgusting way, and you need to realize that. Trump is not the problem. Evangelicals are the problem, and I'd like to have that young man. CJ is your name. I'd like to have you come yeah. to my, come to my guest house in Iowa for about three days, and I will help you to restore yourself to sanity. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, nothing brings me more joy than being lectured by white liberals about how I should approach the issue of race in America. Just the damn but... Just the damn but... I just got done telling you, I'm not white and you're not black. I'm a member of you're the right. same race that I you think... are. You and I are 30th to 50th cousins. Uh, now, you sure. may not want me for your cousin, but that's the way it is. Stop dealing yeah. no. with a lie and start dealing with the facts. Let's deal with reality here. Let's deal with reality here. And the reality is that I don't have to listen to some young man who has already let me know that the color of my skin makes me unable to discuss race. 
Now, don't I, tell me that I can't, because I was I was dealing with racism long before you were born. Fifty-three years I've been listening to people say ugly things about people who look like you, and I'm blaming and blaming those statements on people who look like me. We make a decision as to whether we are going to trust another person based on our judgment of the color of their skin. You cannot judge me by the color of my skin, and I'm not judging you by the color of your skin. I'm judging the remarks that you're making that indicate to me that you aren't thinking very well, that you are following the lies of a man who has, who, he has absolutely violated every constitution, every part of the constitution, and every one of the Ten Commandments. And you are following him, and you're going to go off that, you're going to go off that ledge just like a whole bunch of other really good Christian people are. And you're going to wonder how that happened. Look, you're old enough to grow up now and change that and start thinking for yourself instead of being led by a man who will use you as long as he can. And then when he no longer really needs you, he will drop you like a hot potato. You need to realize that you are not someone he admires or wants around him. As he said in his first news concerts, I've got my black. And he pointed at the one black person in his entourage <laughs> on television. Now, I remember that. You don't remember that because you're too young to have watched it at that time. You well, need to I, open your I, eyes, I, open your I ears, was, and shut I, your I, mouth. Okay, so here's the deal. Jane, so, CJ, <laughs> CJ, yeah. you cannot, you, CJ, go ahead. You cannot respond to Jane. We'll, li we'll let you respond. Go ahead. Well, I appreciate that dressing down my melanemic sister, but I've got to tell you, you know, this is the type of self-righteousness that has turned so many black people away from the Democrat Party. You thinking that you can lecture me about how I should react as a black man in America is the type of pomposity, the type of ego, and the type of overconfidence that literally makes people despise people just like you. I, you will not tell me, you will not define as a melanemic person my experience as a black man in America or discredit my blackness based on my policy politics and my ideals and my principles. You won't do that. And so you can you can tell me to shut my mouth. It, you know, it, that's crazy. That's the thing that really grinds my gears about people just like you. White liberals who think they can tell people on the right, because we're black, that they can tell us to shut up and sit down because we espouse beliefs that are different than their own. That is racist. But, but here's the deal, though. I, I've asked you to see... Right. But CJ... Is, wait, wait, wait. He isn't talking like a black man. He's talking... He is, a, he is talking like a white man. He is doing the same things that Mr. No, Trump has been doing for the last 30 That's years. You are doing the same thing that Donald Trump has been doing, and you are you are regurgitating what Donald Trump has put into your head. You need to stop that and start thinking for yourself. What is with you and these commands? Like, do you think you get to tell black people what to do? Like, is that just how you operate your daily life? Instructing black people how to think, how to act, what they can and cannot say? Because I support a president, President Trump, that brought about the lowest black unemployment rate in our nation's history. Criminal justice reform, the first step to act, millions of dollars navigated to HBCUs, opportunity, economic opportunity zones, which navigated commercial investment to inner cities that were long neglected. And I understand you probably are eager to tell me to shut my mouth right now because you hate it when black conservatives even utter a single word. But I'm going to keep talking because these are facts, these are truths. And actually, actually, I'm going to step in right here. I'm going to step in right here because actually, CJ, what you just spouted were not actual facts. That's first, okay? Uh, excuse me, CJ. CJ, sorry. Everything that you just stated, we've covered on this show. Dr. Walter Kimbrough, who is an HBCU president, Dillard University, has debunked the nonsense that you just stated about HBCU. That's first. He's an actual HBCU president for 16 years. Two, what you have to understand, the woman who actually sponsored the very bill that you are giving Trump credit for, her name is Congresswoman Alma Adams, a graduate of North Carolina A&T. We've had her on this show. So all this talk, what Trump did, that's grossly incorrect. Two, you talked about criminal justice reform. Let me remind you, Donald Trump did not pass criminal justice reform. If it were not for Democrats who controlled the House, there would be no bill that went over to the Senate. It was Congressman Hakeem Jeffries and others who advanced it in the House. Let me also remind you that your party blocked President Barack Obama from passing a criminal justice reform act 
uh, when he was president because they did not want it to include real criminal justice reform. Now, you're sitting there with your huge Alabama flag over your shoulder. And let me remind you, it was former Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, who was the attorney general, who also opposed that very criminal justice <clears throat> reform bill, who stopped it when he was representing that state uh, in uh, the United States Senate. So you can sit here and throw and you can keep yelling facts. But what you're not going to do is lie, because on Fox News, they might let you get away with it, not here. Let me All right, folks, back to that Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.